Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss very important topic that is rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. So actually, rheumatic heart disease is a component of rheumatic fever only. Only in your university exam, you usually very frequently get a long question on both of them, either rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease, and very frequently you get short or very short notes on uh, one of the Jones criteria also. So we will be discussing all five revised Jones criteria also here. <laughs> rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease so first of all i would like to give you an overview the headings under which i am going to discuss this topic so first this is a type of endocarditis so first of all i will give you the definition of endocarditis what do you mean by endocarditis then we will see the various types of endocarditis one of the important type of endocarditis is rheumatic fever there are four important type of endocarditis there is a separate video on all of them so i request all my dear student to watch all these videos together in one shot in continuity so that you will have a better understanding of the topic endocarditis one of the important type of endocarditis the first one is the rheumatic fever so we will start the topic rheumatic fever i will let you know the introduction of the rheumatic fever then etiology then pathogenesis the most important is the revised jones criteria there are five components the five criteria the major criteria of rheumatic fever one of them is rheumatic heart disease the second is migratory polyarthritis, the third is syndam scoria, fourth is erythema marginatum and fifth is subcutaneous nodules. So if you are getting a question on endocarditis, you have to write down all this. If you are getting a question on rheumatic fever, you have to write down all this. If you are getting a question on rheumatic heart disease, you have to write down this portion only. So my advice to all dear students to understand your question first in your university exam. It is not the thing they are, in the university exam they are asking, the examiner is asking anything and you are writing anything and you will get the marks. Whatever relevant is there, write that only. If the question is on endocarditis, you have to describe the four types of endocarditis, the pathogenesis of each of them. If they are asking on rheumatic fever, you have to write down rheumatic fever only, but you have to write down all five components. If they are asking about rheumatic heart disease, you have to write down this component only. So you will understand the topic well after the explanation. Let's start it. So let me tell you endocarditis. You know, human heart has three layers. What are the three layers present in the human heart? Let me show you the three layers. The innermost layer in the human heart is known as endocardium. Can you see this is the innermost layer? This is known as endocardium. The innermost layer is the endocardium. The middle layer of human heart. Let me show you the middle layer. The middle layer is known as myocardium. Can you see here? This one is myocardium. The middle layer. And outermost layer of the human heart is known as pericardium let me highlight the pericardium i hope here you can see this is pericardium so human heart have three layers endocardium myocardium pericardium endo myo peri now please understand this these are the three layers now please see the endocardium where is endocardium present it is the innermost layer now you know in the heart we have the walls can you see the walls of the heart you can see tricuspid wall mitral wall can you tell me the lining of the walls walls are made up of what either the walls are made up of endocardium or myocardium or pericardium or all of them the walls are made up of endocardium so we can see there are two types of endocardium the endocardium which is present over the walls is known as valvular endocardium and the endocardium which is present on rest of the heart it's a three-dimensional structure a globular structure a three-dimensional so the endocardium present the innermost layer present on rest of the heart apart from walls is known as mural endocardium so these are the two types of endocardium have a look in the diagram also so this one is uh, valvular endocardium the blue one and you can see this one the red one is the mural endocardium so valvular endocardium is present over the walls here you can see it is present over the walls and the mural is present in rest of the heart these are the two types of endocardium so and after that there is myocardium and there is pericardium so what is endocarditis now see itis itis and pathology is the inflammation of that organ so they are saying endocarditis means it's the inflammation of the endocardium both the endocardium mural as well as valvular so whenever there is an endocarditis, the walls are always involved because the walls are made up of endocardium. So I am saying endocarditis means I am saying the inflammation in the walls also. So whenever there is an endocarditis, the vegetations are formed in the wall. So I will teach you four types of endocarditis. There is a separate video on all of them. Here we will see one of them, that is rheumatic fever. So I will tell you in all types of endocarditis, the vegetations over the wall. So please understand, what is endocarditis? It is the inflammation of the innermost layer of the heart, that is endocardium. There are two types of endocardium, valvular and mural. Both of them are involved. And here heart walls are always involved, leading to the formation of the vegetations over the wall. So that is the definition, the introduction. Now what are the type of endocarditis? As I told you, there are four types of endocarditis. Please 